This is the season the Viscount intends to find a wife. <laughs> you honestly just did that? I believe I did. Your Majesty, may I present Miss Kate Sharma and Edwina Sharma? I only hope they like me. All you have to do this evening is remember what it is you're looking for. Someone charming. <laughs> and handsome, of course. I cannot be the only one wondering if this former capital R of rake is ready to flourish. It is only out of the greatest love of my family that I aim to choose a bride with my head and not my heart. Hi, guys! Hi. This is Rachel Smith from Las Vegas. Woo! You guys want to come here and celebrate, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I've never been to Vegas. What? I know, Let's... I know. There's so many great shows. We'll get you here for sure for a Bridgerton bash, okay? Absolutely. <laughs> Love that. Netflix, take us to Vegas. Yes! Jonathan, let me start with you. Of course, there's been so much talk out there that the Duke's not returning this season, but wasn't that exciting for you to step up and give fans this new love story to obsess over? Yeah. I mean, yeah, totally. And also what a complicated and different love story it is to the, se the first season. Um, it's amazing, Phoebe and Reggae, you know, they enchanted with their, with their characters, but also the way that they performed them. So, it, you know, it's great. And they've, they've, they've run so we can, they've walked so, so we, we can run. <laughs> and, we, and we will do the same for the, you know, the other siblings going forward. So yeah, it's great. But any suitor wishing to gain an audience with Miss Edwina Sharma must first tame her sister. The sister. The sister. Can you really not see anything engaging about it? Yes, I suppose I can see how he might engage a person. <laughs> oh my! Are you hurt? Come now, it is not proper to stare. And ladies, I have to say, I have a twin sister, and growing up, we'd, we'd sometimes fight over a guy, but this is a next level love triangle. <laughs> Yeah. But there's no fighting. There's like, no. what we say is that this is Bridgeton. It's a female show. You would never have two women fighting over a man. Because at the end of the day, you know, yeah. the love that the sisters have is like, yeah, so, so profound. I want to see the scene where Edwina and Kate have a drink together. Exactly. Where, like, yeah. getting drunk. Like, yeah. <laughs> Talking about Anthony. And they're like, did he do this one time? <laughs> and I love it. My honor is hanging by a thread that grows more precarious with every moment in your presence. I want my sister to be happy. Can you make her happy? When you get the call and you're cast in the second season of Bridgerton, I mean, that is probably so exciting. And then you're like, oh, Bridgerton, love scenes. Uh-oh, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, I mean, I had a chemistry read with Johnny and I think from the get-go there was a a wavelength, a deep understanding of, you know, what we wanted to bring to the, these two characters and how we wanted to work together. And, um, you know, I, I, whenever I work with Johnny, I always leave feeling just really um, proud of what we've achieved together and happy. So I was more excited about bringing the story to life and, you know, love scenes, they're not performative. I think it's quality over quantity. I think when it happens, it's so earned and it's fireworks and, yeah, I, with all of that, I, there was no reason for me to be like, ooh, love scenes. <laughs> no, I'd be like, yes, it's been slow on the home front. I'd be like, yes, love oh, yeah. scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What happens when duty is in conflict with the heart's true desire? Are you so excited for your family and friends and fans to finally see the season because it's been over a year and we've just been waiting for it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. And also, you know, the, there are so many beloved fans of the books that love yeah. Anthony and Kate mm. as much as we do. Mm. Um, and so to share it with them and, you know, to do, to, to do Julia Quinn proud as well, who wrote the original source material. But yeah, it's great. And also, you know, everyone's welcome in this show. Everyone can see themselves yeah. on the screen. And that representation is what makes it even more important and joyful for us. Dearest gentle reader, did you miss me? As the members of our town questioned my identity and means, this author has been doing but one thing.
honing my skills. For all, all of you. you. There are so many amazing parts for women in the Bridgerton series, but man, you've got the juiciest role of the whole bunch. <laughs> I mean, it is a good one. It's funny, when I got the role, I thought I first thought, you know, she's just this shy wallflower. I was like, amazing, it's a Shana Rhyme show, I'll do anything, I'll, you know, whatever, this is great. I, and then when I find out she's Lady Whistledown, I was like, whoa, I can't believe they've entrusted all of that to me. And it's also made season two so much fun, because in season one, she's very shy and it's all, you know, under everything. And then in season two, it's like, boom, it's all out there. I mean, <laughs> it's gotta be, like you said, a whole new way to play the role now that your identity has been revealed. 100% and I think it's quite fun to like bring the audience along with you and go come on come this way we'll show you how she's getting away with it and how she's sort of tricking everyone and you know working it all out and you're sort of playing that fun side to her that's you know can deceive everyone and then she's this businesswoman and yeah it was great I loved it. Lady Whistledown's words carry far too much import. We must entrap the scribbler. Genius idea, ma'am. Yes, that is why I thought of it. I love her character so much. I mean, if, she, if Lady Whistledown was going to have a gossip column in Las Vegas, what would she call that? Oh, Whispers from the Strip? Does that work? Woo, that's good. Okay, we'll go with that. We might have to write that together. Okay, okay. <laughs> I like that. But honestly, too, I mean, coming back, your life has completely changed, I'm sure. I mean, what has been the wildest fan experience being out on the street and people recognizing you after this first show just blew up? I mean, it's really crazy. I went on holiday to the States in January and I was in a coffee shop in Austin, Texas and these teenage girls sort of started squealing and I was like, why are they doing that? And then I was like, oh, it's about me. And I was like, I'm halfway across the world. Like, this is so crazy to me. Um, and then like Kim Kardashian being a big fan of the show and you know, Drew Barrymore, Reese Witherspoon, like it's all quite wild and unfathomable. Dearest reader, it has been said that competition is an opportunity for us to rise before our greatest of challenges. Penelope, she has these two personalities with Lady Whistledown, but if Penelope were in real life, in modern day, what would be the Netflix show, not Bridgerton, that sure. she would be binge watching? Penelope. Oh. What would she be binge watching? I feel like something like Selling Sunset, something with a lot of gossip in it. Something like that, where she'd be like all like all secrets and whispers and maybe. <laughs> and I was hoping for season three. I mean, listen, you know, Penelope has been patient. She's been a loyal friend. It's time for her to have a little loving, don't you think? Maybe. <laughs> mm. Maybe there'll be a new gentleman. Listen, Colin is, you know, he's a little slow, so maybe there'll be a new gentleman. You're not the first person to say that to me, and I'm shocked, because I'm such I'm such a Colin and Penelope shipper. I'm like, no, I want them to be together. And everyone's like, a new guy. I'm like, no, no, Colin's so great. He is so great, but hello, buddy, pick up on the cues. I mean, I know, if you, I know. If you he's just cast... in his feelings. He's in his feelings, and she, you yes. know. <laughs> he is. But if you could cast an actor out there for Penelope's love interest, and the casting director said, guess what, Nicola, you get a pick. Who would Ooh. be your love interest? Ooh. What about Timothy Chalamet? I don't know. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, come in and maybe he's another, maybe he's like a, a gossip guy, and then she, I don't know. You know what? I, we listen. You gotta come to Vegas. We'll go have coffee. We got ideas, Shonda. We gotta let her know. Right, right. Whispers on the strip. It's gonna be a work trip. It'll be great fun. Listen, that's gonna take off. I swear. True love is worth it. <laughs>